Do you marry the person that you have the best sex with? Because, like, I've had men who, who've inboxed me about their wives or girlfriends, and the question I always ask them is, um, well, how long have they been this way? And usually the question is, they were like this the whole time. And I'm like, well, if you knew that she didn't like to do A, B, and C, and you like A, B, and C, why did you marry her? Ashley Cobb opens up about being the best every man has ever had, and also struggling to find a man who's capable of having her, all of her. And sometimes I wonder if, you know, I can have it all, whatever that looks like. Can, can I have the career that I'm, I'm having? Can I have the husband, right? And how does that I don't know make you feel? Um, kind of scary. Plus, the men previously known as Enjoy the Podcast link back up to come on here to share their insights on the Madonna whore complex. And if you're not really quite sure what that means, no stress, that means that you are in the perfect place because that is what we're discussing on this episode of Lovers and Friends. Lovers and friends. I'm going to take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I say, Lovers and Friends. Uh, I'm going to hold you down, down to the end. I say, Hi there, lovers and friends. Woo! Joy opulence, abundance, contentment. Your girl's back in the studio. I am so happy to be home in Los Angeles, California after six, seven episodes that we have been abroad, which I can say because I was in Canada, being abroad. Uh, but now we're local again and it feels good to be home. Thank you all for rocking with me all summer long. As per usual, we talk about sex, love, and relationships on this show. Without further ado, let's jump into this episode. We're going to be talking about the Madonna whore complex, a theory proposed by Sigmund Freud, a psychologist that I think I could speak for all psychologists and psychology enthusiasts by saying there's a very severe love-hate relationship with this man and his theories. From the 19th to the mid 20th centuries, many psychologists inspired by Sigmund Freud oh, argued that women should only achieve orgasm through vaginal penetration by a man. What? As a result, until the mid 20th century, psychologists considered women who orgasm from clitoral stimulation immature and even prone to psychosis. Proper sexual pleasure was defined only through married, vaginal, heterosexual intercourse. Women who could not orgasm this way were often considered frigid, disordered, or automatically assumed to be lesbian, which of course at the time was also considered a mental illness. Freud's contribution to the plight of women's sexual pleasure happened over 100 years ago. And sadly, even though it's been debunked many, 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 many times by many experts and many books that we all love, some people still believe it. But if we listen to the work of researcher Dr. Elizabeth Lloyd instead of Freud, this video would not be necessary. Elizabeth Lloyd analyzed 74 years of studies and concluded that amongst orgasmic women, when intercourse that was not accompanied by stimulation of the clitoris, just a quarter of the women studied experienced orgasms often or very often during intercourse. So yes, ridiculous opinions of female sexual anatomy aside, I do think the Madonna whore complex touches on something that is interesting, is relevant, and is definitely relevant to Ashley's experience that we're talking about in this episode. So this complex describes a psychological phenomenon in which a man's perception of women is divided into two distinct categories. He either sees women as a Madonna or as a whore. The Madonna is modest, she is meek, she is matronly. She has qualities that are associated with innocence and morality. Now this side of the complex is associated with safety, comfort, and connection. The whore, on the other hand, is associated with sexual desire, sensuality, and eroticism. This side of the complex involves fantasies or desires for more adventurous or taboo experiences, and whores, for lack of a better title, are seen as mysterious and unpredictable. Now, if men have this complex and subscribe to its ideologies that a woman is either pure innocence or pure eroticism, it makes it tough for him to see one woman as both a sexual partner and someone he could have a real serious relationship with. This can lead to problems in relationships and sex for the man, like having a hard time balancing the women he's attracted to and what he believes he is supposed to be attracted to. Now, this theory is, as I said, Old, not gender inclusive, cross-culturally flawed, and way too binary to capture the complexities of the role of our sexual past and how that plays a role in our mating experiences. However, I know plenty of people whom this is very familiar to. 
There are Madonnas out there whom are very sexually meek and sexually repressed and find partners, but finding those relationships that the sex lacks luster and that oftentimes either party is interested in sex outside of the confinements of their monogamous agreement. I also know people who have the whore complex or the whore struggle where they are able to find partners who allow them to live in their sexual fullness and delight in their sexual fullness, but find that that abundance in one area causes scarcity in the ability to find partners who are also able to not just claim them privately, but also publicly. And if they believe in this, matrimonially. So what's somebody who lives in the gender binary to do in this situation? That's what we're talking about with sex expert, Ashley Cobb, AKA sex with Ashley, a sex educator and an ambassador for prep who wants black women in specificity to know that pre-exposure prophylaxis is for them too. She is also the founder of Sensual Black Girl Magic and a very interesting follow on Instagram, if I do say so myself. We're gonna jump into my chat with her after I tell you about the sponsor of this episode, our first of four, Honey Love. Ladies and gentlemen, summer is not the time to be in uncomfortable bras and shapewear. Thankfully, Honey Love has revolutionized the bra game. Upgrade from traditional bras that use uncomfortable underwire and bulky fabrics that trap heat. Honey Love's bras feature supportive bonding that eliminates the need for underwire without sacrificing lift, which of course we can't do that. Plus they're made with fabric that is so soft, it's gonna feel like second skin. You're gonna notice the difference immediately. It is so next level comfortable. You're going to forget that you're wearing it. Now for a limited time only, you can get Honey Love on sale. Get 20% off your entire order with our exclusive link, honeylove.com slash lovers. Support this show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash lovers. Now I was going to show you my Honey Love bra, but I went to Toronto and I wore that thing every day. And guess what? I left it in the wash at my parents' house. So now I gotta go use the code too. So let me go get on that. And you guys get into this conversation with Ashley. Hi. Hi. Oh, a note. Uh, can you, you know, sing? I, you know, I can carry a, a tune. I'm a background singer. That's a gift. You know, I grew up, I grew up in the church, so I can, you know, did the choir thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. But were you background in the choir? Yes, very much background. Very much background. But you still have to be able to sing. I not feel necessarily. Like Some people in the choirs cannot sing. <laughs> that is not a requirement. You would think it would be, but it's not. Enthusiasm is. Yeah, enthusiasm. All right, let's talk about love and dating. Interestingly, we mm -hmm. were just chatting off camera, which now I have to do my homework and go watch that you were uh -huh. on a show. Yes. So you were on a dating show, which oh. kind of perfectly positions the conversation we're about to have. Yes. Because they wanted to paint you as a certain archetype. They did. Tell me more about that. So I was on the Bravo show last summer, Love Match Atlanta. So it was a dating show that centered around these matchmakers finding these singles in Atlanta dates. And so, you know, I am on pretty a, a, a good number of the episodes i'm on the first episode and i am the sex writer i come out with these sex toys and all these things um you know um so i am very sex positive and so my matchmaker's job was to find a match for me um being this sex positive sexually explorative person take me one step further to why it became an eye roll for you um, so, <laughs> um, interesting enough, I, I, so, so I've never said this publicly, so we'll say that. So, um, the show was interesting. It was interesting because I felt like, um, that even though I am very much sex positive, I've, I am very much the person who lives out loud. I felt like they were trying to. Um, make me make me into this person that I kind of really wasn't. And one of the, one of the things that the matchmaker was like, it was kind of hard to match me because I was this um, sex person, and also because I didn't have the Atlanta look. You know, whatever the land look is, I don't know. Um, but because I didn't have the look, and because I was this person who, you know, I I do go to swinger clubs, right? I do write about sex. Um, it was hard to match me. Now, to her credit, that is an issue that I have. I've been having in my day in life. When I tell men, um, you know, when they ask me what, what do you do for a living, I'm like, I write about sex. And they're like, what you mean? You know, I write about sex. I write about blowjobs. I write about pleasure. I write about orgasms. I write about all of the things. And they're kind of like taken aback. You know, they're like, I don't know if I want my wife or <laughs> my woman to be someone who's so open. You know, if you ever go to my Instagram page, 
Um, on in, any given day, we talk about sex toys, maybe. Uh, people ask me questions because, you know, I, I had a sex column at one point in time. So people ask questions about different things. You know, the other day I was telling somebody about blowjobs, like how to suck dick. You know what I'm saying? Um, so a lot of people, a lot of men who I found, they are not really comfortable um, with saying out loud that this is my woman. So it was a very interesting experience. Even though I do, I do struggle with... Um, finding long-term relationships, I have no problems going on dates with people, right? Getting a date in Atlanta is relatively kind of easy to do, right? Um, over time, as people, as you get to know people, sometimes people are like, eh, I don't know, this is too much for me. I, I've had someone tell me that my life was too much for them. I understand that. I was saying this to you on our call, how uh, the guests that I have on just before, mm-hmm. which I balk shoot guys. Okay. This is the same day as the Dom episode. And interestingly, there is such a parallel between you and him. Okay. You did so let me explain how he's on a show, a dating show as okay. well. I didn't even know you were on a dating mm-hmm. show. So the matches is just matching. So he's on a dating show before and he cried on that show. Okay. And I had an episode with Abba and preach two years ago now about male vulnerability and they likened male vulnerability to women's sexual liberation mm. because they were saying that when men cry and show their emotions, that can be used against them to embarrass them, to tarnish them, and to make them less masculine and yes. thus less of a desirable partner. Mm-hmm. Same way, if women mm-hmm. are sexually liberal, right. that can be used against them to tarnish them and to make them look like not a sexually viable partner. Right. So I asked him the question of like, do you regret doing that because of all the criticism, the humiliation, like what that did? And he was like, no, I don't at all. Mm -hmm. And then I asked you similarly, like, do you regret? And you said, no, like I would do it all over again. Um, Of course, there are some things that I probably would change along the way. But overall, I would do it all over again um, because I actually wake up and I love what I do. Um, I love being able to, I love when women come up to me and be like, um, I can't wait to hear your questions of the day or whatever. Cause I, I, I can save them. And I, and I, can, I can do this with my husband. Or I do this with my, my, my partner. Like they look forward to learning new things, how to increase the pleasure, how to increase um, just how to be sexual free beings without judgment. I love teaching and showing other women how to do that. So I would do it all over again. Because there would be a sector of people who are like, you're encouraging women to be sexually liberal, Mm -hmm. where for you, it's actually bit you in the butt. Mm -hmm. But that bite has not been, I guess, the pleasure that you get from the work that you do and the excitement of the job that you have Mm -hmm. outweighs the fact that, like, yes, on the other side, it is true that it makes it hard to find a partner. And I think everything in life has ups and downs. Do you think men really want freaks? I do. I think they want freaks that are quiet, though. (laughs) So I think they lady want, in the streets yeah, freaking the sheets. I think they want freaks that no one knows that they're freaks. That's what I do. Cause like I've had men who who've inboxed me about their wives or girlfriends, and the question I always ask them is, um, well, how long have they been this way? And usually the question is, they were like this the whole time. And I'm like, well, if you knew that she didn't like to do A, B, and C, and you like A, B, and C, why did you marry her or why did you get with her? You know because. But they looked a certain way. They, those type women, um, typically have the look that they're looking for in a partner. But they're missing this other thing that's a big piece for men. A lot of men are, sex is a big piece for them, right? So, but so then now you're together, and, and but now the part that you really need, you're 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 lacking. And sometimes, sex can be a, it's a taught thing, right? You can teach people, but sometimes. It's comp- compatibility matters, and some people y'all are just not sexually compatible, and that's the thing. But one dude, for example, he asked me about he wanted to like um, explore, be open, and explore threesomes, right, with his wife. They've been married like ten years, and I saw so I'm like, well, does she like women? <laughs> he was like. No, I was like, well, you know, that's kind of a, you know, <laughs> a thing of three sons. You got kind of like women, right? And then there's, and then there's some women who, no matter what you do, you can talk to them about it, you go to a therapist, they're not going to do it because it's not them. And that's okay. But I think if a lot of men would just date people that they actually like 
all the way around, get the 80% of the thing they like, and then they'll be happier and to stop going with um, what they think society tells them a wife is. That's so fascinating. So you said that dudes, so dudes DM you to, mm -hmm. what do they say in the DMs? Usually it's like, um, how can I get my wife to be freakier? Um, how can I get my wife to be on board with us having, being open, poly? How can I get my wife to just do things they want to do? And think, and these are, and typically these things are not new discoveries for them. These are things they've always been into, and the and the women they are attached themselves to are like, no, I'm good, and it's okay for them to be like, no, I'm good. But you should, just should have married someone who was more in line with what you wanted. But they don't marry that they woman. They don't. And then now they're like ten years in. Now they're bored to death. Part of the interruption, but I had to ask you guys a very important question. Mon podcast vous play. I am back from Canada and there was something so magical about seeing my children interact with all parts of my culture, even parts I've neglected like the French language. Like most Canadians, I grew up learning French. And although I could still recite the Hail Mary, <laughs> I've definitely struggled to have some basic conversations there. So I started using my Babbel subscription since it's already on my phone to brush up on my Francais. And the best way to learn a language, of course, is through immersion, living where the language is spoken natively. But that's not possible for everyone. So the second best way to learn a language is Babbel. Because with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in just three weeks. Babbel's quick 10 minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve pronunciation and accent. Usted es la señora Garcia? Usted es la señora San Garcia? Nope. <laughs> okay, I got it wrong. Usted es la señora Garcia? Gracias. Are you guys impressed? I'm a little impressed with myself. With over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babbel is real language learning for real conversations. And here is a special limited time deal for listeners of Lovers and Friends. Get started right now. Today is the best day. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for Lovers and Friends listeners at babbel.com slash lovers. Again, up to 55% off at Babbel dot com slash lovers and you can spell that b-a-b-b-e-l dot com slash lovers rules and restrictions may apply but they don't marry that they woman they don't and then now they're like 10 years in now they're bored to death and or they're not having as much sex or or the quality of sex is not where they want it to be and now they're trying to figure out how to fix that when I think part of the problem is, and let's go back to women too, because like women, when, when we look for mates, typically we're not told to prioritize their sexual, um, our, our, the sex of a mate, the sexual quality of a mate, right? We're, we're, we're told to look for men who are providers, who have a certain amount of income, who can be good parents, right? We're not really told to um, look for men that we like sexually, because I've had women who also have, who have inboxed me. And this one woman particularly, she was, um, they were married. They've been dating for a while, have a kid. Um, but she she hates having sex with him. Like, she is, she, is, she doesn't, doesn't like it at all. And I asked her, I was like, well, why did you marry him? She was like, because he was a good provider and a good father to our kid. And that's important, right? That's what people tell us. This, this is important. But at the end of the day, if sex is a high priority to you, for you, it's still going to be a high priority after you get married. So then what? That's such an interesting flip, too, because you living your truth in this way allows so that you're only aligning with people who, mm -hmm. like, authentically do connect with mm -hmm. you on an area that you're like is important. It's important. Like, I, 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 I can I cuss here? Yeah. I like to fuck, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. Uh -huh. Like, I like to fuck. I like good sex. So if I'm with someone, regardless of you can be a millionaire and you can be all the things that I think I think I want. But if we have bad sex and you want me to be monogamous, that's important. Now, if we have a thing and we can be open, OK, maybe. But if you want me to be monogamous and our sex life is in the trash, I cannot be with you. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. Because I think a lot of, I'm thinking about the person in particular. So a friend, I hope she's comfortable with me sharing this. I think she talked about it on the podcast. But Stacey Ike was saying to me, like, how do you be so open about your sexuality? Mm -hmm. Like, when you were single, especially, like, how did you do that? Because 
wasn't it one intimidating or two a turnoff to mm -hmm. a lot of dudes? Mm -hmm. And then my response was the time was like, I wouldn't want to fuck any of those dudes anyways. Right. But I also like maybe just acknowledge, I don't really think maybe it's culturally where I'm at or I never felt like it stopped me from getting partners. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of women, they have to have that thought in their head of like, there's a choice that has to be made between living my sexual truth mm -hmm. and getting to live in my happily ever after. Right. And sometimes I wonder if, you know, I can have it all, whatever that looks like. Can can I have the career that I'm I'm having? Can I have the husband? Right. I don't I'm not really uh, big on the kid thing. But so can I have whatever my family is and still do this work? So that's a question I ask myself a lot. Um and I don't know the answer to that question, honestly. I don't know. I, hopefully, one day, um, I can get to have it all, whatever it all looks like for me. But I don't know as of right now. So. And how does that I don't know make you feel? Um, kind of scary. Um, kind of scary. I I often wonder. Um, you know, because I'll be forty here soon. Like I'm knocking on the door. Um, I often wonder, like, when I'm sixty, will I still be? where I am because um, truthfully I don't want to be 60 and alone I mean but I don't I don't like I would love in a perfect world I would love to be 60 and partnered with a long you know maybe married maybe with a long-term partner but partnered right I have my person I don't want to be 60 and 70 by myself but I mean I guess I could meet my single friends could have like a whole golden girls type you know, thing that sounds fun too. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. But it does, it does, I do think about it often. But on the flip side, you're getting to live your authentic sexual truth. Yeah. And have amazing adventures. Yes. What's it like to be sexually liberated? <sighs> um, it's so freeing. Um, because a lot of people may or may not know this. Like when I, I grew up in the south in of North Carolina in a very religious family. And so um, I used to be a part of a um, purity cult where, you know, I was the, I was one of the leaders <laughs> of the cult, uh, of the group, the uh, group leaders in my town of the cult. And we used to like, you know, have Bible study and send texts out with people to be pure, make sure you're not, you know, engaging in sexual things and all this stuff. And I was and, and then I just like a professional cock blocker. Pretty much. That's what it was. <laughs> for Jesus. A cock blocker for Jesus. <laughs> That's what it was. Jesus pussy security guard. That's what it was. That was Jesus pussy security guard. Um, <laughs> and I remember one day I was like, I am horny as fuck. Why am I doing this? Like, like why am I doing this? I'm going to go find me some dick. And that's what I did. And I've been fucking ever since. Happily fucking ever since. What does that look like? <laughs> fucking happily fucking well like what does your sex life look like oh well, I, um well currently i don't have one <laughs> so it's real dry at the moment um but you know um it looks like my life looks very different now at someone who's almost 40 than when it was 10 years ago because when it was 10 years ago i was doing all the things trying to figure out what i wanted sexually trying to learn me now because i know who i am what i like sexually it's calmed down a lot um, so you now, and now also, because I'm also trying to, I'm over the, the quote unquote whole phase, been there, done that. So now I'm actually trying to find a partner. There's a particular influencer that I know who basically like lived a whole lifestyle, was very loud and proud about it. Mm -hmm. That was how they built their brand. And then came to a point where they wanted something more serious and then renounced the whole lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And was like, this was the wrong path. Mm -hmm. I was closing myself off. I was a hurt person. I mm -hmm. was using sex as a way to get attention and bolster my self-esteem. And like now I realize that I was leading women astray. Mm -hmm. And I want to find something more serious. And I've put all that behind me. Mm -hmm. No, that's not me. Like, um, so I feel like every woman should have a whole phase, right? Every woman. Because I've seen it where people who did not and they dated seriously, got married young, and then somehow in their marriage, some some years later, they're trying to figure out what they like. They realize that I don't know if I like this or they realize, oh, I always wanted to try that. But their husband 
does not. And that now they have kind of like a little bit of regret. Regret. Yeah. I've seen that more often than not. Um, so in my opinion, I think women should have a whole phase if just for a year, six months, three years, however long you want to have it, a phase where you are just focused on you and what you want to do sexually and not so much trying to have sex in return of love or relationship. I think a lot of a lot of times in our youth, our younger in our younger selves, we are doing things for with sex for a return. Like we're doing this because I'm hoping that he'll love me. I'm hoping that he'll see me as the one and he'll one day try to put a ring on it. But whole phases for me is for you. And you're just doing things because you want to do them because I like it with no return. Can you tell me a whole story that you're going to tell your grandkids? Ooh, a whole story. I'm telling my grandkids. Let's see. Um, I know that you don't necessarily want kids, so whatever you know, that looks like for you, or whatever. Like you they, know, uh, they're they're gathering around. They're older. They're of age. It's it's logical. And uh, you're like, listen, I had the time of my life. I've have quite. I've I have some whole stories. Um, I think. Uh, let's see. I met a man. I went to a sex club once because I I used to go to sex clubs kind of because I was curious. And there was this guy there, um, and we didn't. The crazy thing is, we didn't have sex at the sex club, which is crazy. We were there. I mean, it's, it's we were there. We were talking, and you would think we would have sex at the sex club because that's what sex clubs are for. They're for people to fuck. Um, but we didn't. And so I and I met him the same night around the corner, <laughs> and we fucked in his car. <laughs> I don't I have no idea and then I never talked to him. I never heard from him again no he he texted but I never responded and I never talked to him again it was like let me just do this and then I just I think because you know I was raised to believe you only have sex in the confines of marriage um and you only have sex with people that you love right so and that's what I was raised to believe for so long and then when I started to realize that sex and love are not the same, you can have one without the other and it's perfectly okay. Um, I became more liberated and more free knowing that I, I can, I can have sex with you and not want nothing from, from you after that. And that's okay. And that doesn't really make me a bad girl or doesn't really make me a hoe or whatever that is. It just makes me someone who wants to have sex. Yes. And that's what it is. <laughs> So, yeah, so that for me, that was very liberating. And yeah, I, I, you know, I encourage everyone, if you have never had a one night stand, try it once. Let's see if you like it. I think there's something beautiful about that, too, because it is like you're detaching yourself from the need to be validated mm -hmm. by that person saying you're more than your body. Mm -hmm. You're more than this, mm -hmm. because sometimes it's OK to just be your body. Yeah, it's just, it's OK. And I and I and for me, I think what. The biggest thing I've learned on my sexual journey is that one, um, women desire sex just like men because society teaches us that men are the only ones who want sex all the time. That's not true. But just yesterday, I was like, "Damn, I would love to be not this nice hotel here. I would love to have someone to come over." Like, but I did not. Um, so, like, women desire sex as much as men. It's okay to be to have desired sex. I was watching. Have you watched Queen Queen Charlotte on mm -mm. Netflix? I didn't watch the original one, so I was like, I can't okay. watch the sequel. You can. You don't. You can. Okay. Okay. So out in Queen Charlotte, um, one of the ladies in there, um, the Bridgerton lady, her husband has has died, and she she used the words, "My rose garden has blossomed." You know, she's horny, right? Her husband's dead. She's trying to figure out <laughs> what, what's happening. There's no men here, and one of the ladies has t told her that it's okay. When your rose blossom has has when your rose garden has a blossom to you know to water it because she's like I water it, but she but her husband also is dead and she never got remarried and so the lady was like what you mean you water it you're like you're not married she was like girl I water it <laughs> like you know <laughs> so she she is getting her needs met and I think women some of us feel like um, because we're not in marriages or relationships that is shame is shame around. Just fucking to fuck because you're horny and I want to fuck. There's nothing wrong with that. Part of the interruption, but I am thrilled to tell you about our third of four sponsors on this episode, FabFitFun. Question for you, is your beauty routine getting redundant? Your favorite products just not doing it like they used to before? 
Well, I want to tell you about FabFitFun because they make it easy to refresh your beauty, hair care, and home needs by delivering full-size products right to your door at unbelievable discounts. I'm talking guys, each box is customizable and worth up to $300 in products, but they can get it to you for up to 70% off and here is how. They have over a million members and FabFitFun helps brands grow by placing massive orders with big promotions. In exchange, the brands offer up early access, exclusive drops, and steep discounts on the most sought after products. It also helps the fact that FabFitFun members know what's up. We are influencers and we are curators, so you want us using your products and that you know, comes with a little extra incentive for us. So I got it delivered to my home in Toronto and I gave my niece products, my mom got products, and then they had to go to Sephora and stock up because they loved the introduction so much. They use Glow Recipe, which they were obsessed with, Cover Effects, which they were obsessed with. So I think that's also the reason why they get these big discounts because they know by offering you some of their best products, you'll be incentivized to fall in love with these brands more, um, as we did. So we're walking billboards. Sign up at fabfitfun.com slash lovers, customize your box and get access to discounts up to 70% off on brands like Fenty, Free People and Our Place, just to name a few. And if you're not in love with this season's options, no stress. Take your credit and use it to shop their exclusive flash sales up to 70% off on some of the biggest brands out there. Look, y'all, let me say it one more time. It is fabfitfun.com slash lovers to get in where I now fit in. And then when you try to dim that part of yourself down and deny that mm -hmm. you're sexual because it might make you more marketable to somebody who's looking for a wife, mm -hmm. you end up in relationships where the sex is not fulfilling mm -hmm. and that becomes a different kind of problem. Mm -hmm. I know people who, again, I grew up in a church. So I know people who just got married because they wanted to have sex. Yes. Yeah. We all know those people. Uh -huh. We've been to those weddings. Yeah. Uh -huh. You just getting married because y'all want to fuck, just fuck. And then see if you liked your enough, then get married. They just wanted to have sex. And so sometimes it, you know, works, you know, depends on what you think working work is. Cause just because you not technically haven't gotten divorced doesn't mean it's working. But sometimes it, they work out, and sometimes they don't. Um, but yeah, don't. It, I I got free from believing that if I engage in sexual activity before marriage, that I was going to go to hell. Can I ask about your body count? Huh? Do you do answer body count questions? Uh, no. Uh, yes and no. Like when men ask me, I like no. And truthfully, and truthfully, the answer is why I don't I don't answer is because I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I stopped counting years ago. <laughs> no idea. More than 10? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so no. Because <laughs> I think that that's the new fear. So it's not like, oh, if I have sex, I'm going to hell. It's if I have sex with a lot of people, I'll never find a long term partner. I can see that because now I, I hear the narrative of that. Um, well, and this is and this is I know a man created this narrative, but the narrative is like oh, if you have sex with all these people, then you're gonna be forever comparing and you gonna compare your your person to the other people you've had, blah blah blah. You know, well, you know, you had to you have too many partners. No, you just don't know how to fuck, sir. <laughs> That's all that is. And you can, but you can get better. But instead of getting better, you're trying to create the narrative of. If you have too many partners, you're not going to be able to know what good sex is. That's a lie. You know what, though? That's actually the more evolved way that I've heard it described. Because that's at least alluding to your insecurity. Mm -hmm. Because most men don't even do that. Mm -hmm. They'll just be like, you're a hoe. You're a slut. Mm -hmm. You're for the streets. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, well, why does that bother you? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you've had multiple men. Okay, well, why does that bother you? Well, because now you've got a large frame rate of comparison and I might not measure up. I measure up. <coughs> the measuring up part also speaks to the fact that a lot of men aren't able to be vulnerable when it comes to their sexual performance mm -hmm. or because they're not really learning. Like I, there's this uh, video clip of this dude being like, I like having sex with women with not a lot of partners because I love the experience of doing something on a woman that she's never had done before. Ooh. Yes. So let me tell you about that. I have a story. So um, when it comes to sex, there's pretty much I, I will do anything once, t two times to know if I like it or not. And there's and there's I pretty much have done I've done a lot of things right in my sexual experiences. Like what's the range? I've there's not too many things I haven't done. So I, mean, I haven't done a threesome because I don't want to. 
We were talking about like anal, yeah, the, foot stuff. Yes, the regular body massage. Yeah, we're right. Um, so role playing. Yes, stuff like that. BDSM. Yes, but light BDSM, not like dick stomping. No, not like dick stomping. No, 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 no. But hey, if you want, want it, I'll try. I'll do. It. I'll try anything once, twice, twice, at least twice. You know. So anyway, so this dude. So I'm not a big fan of anal sex. I've had it done multiple times. I could take it or leave it. It's not something that I have to do. Um, so I was dating this person um, recently, and they wanted to have anal sex with me. And I was like, it's a no for me. I don't want to do it anymore. I've done it. All right? I'm good on it. And they made this whole big thing about it. And it was like, well, some I, there's a man out there who, who has one up on me. What do you mean? Because cause there's a man out there, there's, there's actually more than one man out there, who's had their penis in my ass. And now you feel a way about it. Why? But you're, but you're dating me, though. They're not dating me. I don't know where they are. And I could not wrap my mind around, like, why do you care? Because truthfully, there's a, there's a couple other experiences that I've done you're not going to do either. I don't, I don't want to do them no more. I, I tried it, didn't like it, was, or was it for me? And, I, and I'm, I'm good on it. So why does it matter? But men care about shit like that. And it's very weird to me. Or on the flip side, they care that another dude has experienced what they get. Yeah. Like, oh, like the fact that other dudes have had anal with you, mm -hmm. it makes it less special for me because I know that I'm not the first one here or the only one to experience this. Like I used to date a dude who was um, CEO of a of an after school program and great guy, college educated. Um, he had a kid. Um, but yeah, very like suit and tie type person. Um I got a dom one year for my birthday because, you know, I wanted to have a dom. So, you know, and he was like, what is that? It's the person you pay to do things, sexual things to you, right? And, you know, he wanted to know all the details. So I actually explained the details. And he was so turned off by that. And we never talked again after that. That's our last conversation. And we never, he was just like, this is not for me. So, hey. And that's. What's the dot, dot, dot for you for that? Um, I just was like, okay, well, he's not the one. And that's just kind of what it was. Even though I liked him, like I did like him. And I we had great conversations. And I thought like, no, hey, maybe this could be a thing. Ultimately for me, you have to be someone who is um, not embarrassed by what I do. You have to be someone who is confident enough to be like, that's my woman and not let the voices of outside people deter your opinion of what we have going on. So he just wasn't it. I think that's the truth. Like on the other side of living your authentic truth is rejection for who you are. And that hurts. It does. It does. But you know, at this point I've had a lot of rejection, so I'm kind of used to it. <laughs> so but it does. It, 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 I, I would love to be able to find someone who just loves me for me and all the things. And sometimes I've often said, like, if I, like I said, I used to be a teacher. Like, if I was still teaching, I'd probably be married by now. But, you know, what am I going to do about it? Stop doing what I'm doing? I'm, I'm almost 40. I'm not, I'm not changing careers now. And you love it. And I love it. And you're amazing at it. Well, thank you. You are fantastic well, at thank it. Thank you. I think that you spark some of the most interesting conversations. I think that you are so... You bring the fun to it. I, you bring the fun to fucking. Okay. I always think that one of the biggest mistakes with sex education is that so people boring. throw out. Exactly. It's so boring. Everything that you hate about bad sex mm -hmm. is what a lot of sex education embodies. Yeah. It's dry. Yes. It's faceless. It's yeah. stale. Mm -hmm. It's monotonous. It's predictable. It's safe. Like it has to be risky. It has to be juicy. It has to be wet. It has to be in your face. It has to be a little cheeky. It has to be. I've had sex educators um, ask me or ask other people about me and they wonder um, why uh, I have the following that I do or why I'm able to be on different platforms that I'm on. And I think one is because one, I am just who I am. Right. Are they asking like in a jealous way? Like, why does she get the kinda, opportunities? You know, kind of. And the, and the crazy thing, there's all, there are always black women who ask the questions. Mm. Um, and... I, and and what what I t tell people to tell them is, um, you know, I, I'm I'm 
what people have told me is I'm fun. I'm relatable. I'm not dry. I'm not boring. Um, and sometimes people are just boring. But just be who you be who you are. If you're boring, there is someone that is boring who's go, who's gonna love you. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, like I've always told, like I cuss a lot, right? I cuss a lot in regular conversation. So I, you know, so I cuss on Instagram. So there's some people who don't like to hear the word fuck. I. I Say it, fuck, pussy. I say all, all the things. And for some people, that's too much. Cool. Don't follow me. There's someone who I, I know people who are Christian ed, Christian sex educators, someone who are who are mommy sex educators, someone who are all these other things. Find your tribe. Right? So I think the thing with me is people like that I'm fun and I am just who I am. Like I don't even call myself a sex educator, actually. Like I just kind of hate the term because the term to me represents boredom and dryness. <laughs> like I'm not that. Please don't. <laughs> like it's just no, don't do that. Um, but but technically that's what I am. But yeah, I, I don't I don't identify <laughs> as one. So as you're saying this, are you like, oh, this is exactly how I feel about my dating life? Uh, which mean bored is no, like Find your tribe. Yes. Find your people. Yes. There is going to be somebody who's the church person. There is going to be this. There is going to be that. Like, I'm not changing myself or editing my truth or dimming down my fire right. to make myself more palatable for right. people who ultimately are I'm not even compatible with. All right, because then you're not going to be happy. And that's and that's that's the biggest thing I've learned since moving to Atlanta. Um, two years. I've been in Atlanta two years. And it is to just find your tribe there's someone out there who's going to fuck with you find your tribe um although like i said i you know i've i've date people i haven't you know haven't got married yet so but i'm still finding my tribe but i'm i'm more hopeful now than i was probably two years ago because i'm learning like oh dang there are some people who actually do like me now i may not like them but it's some people <laughs> That's a trick too, that's right? Trick, yeah. <laughs> but you love it. Yeah. You got to find the one who I like and they like me too. So that's it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, before you go, what are all the things? Where can people find you? Where can oh. they follow you? So I'm on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and at Sex with Ashley. That's the name for everything. Sex with Ashley. That's it? You don't want to tell them about your new candle business coming out? Or I don't have no candle business. Your affiliate I, code. I, Wait a second. No, we're going to talk about prep. Oh, yeah, prep. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I am on prep, right? I'm on prep. I am on. So there's two types of prep. You have uh, the daily pill, kind of like a birth control pill. And then you have an injectable prep. I'm on the injectable prep. It's a long act, uh, acting one. I go every other month and get a shot in my ass. And I am. And it keeps me HIV, HIV free. Right. And the reason why I chose to be on prep was one, because even though I'm, I'm HIV negative, I'm HIV possible. And so what that means is because I am someone who engages in sexual activity, and let's be, let's be honest, I don't always use condoms. You know, I should, you know, but I don't always, always use them. Um, and I'm also in Atlanta, which is the South. And Atlanta is like fifth in the country for like their HIV rates. And because black women are also on the rise um, with um, acquiring HIV, uh, cisgender black women. I felt like I needed to do something to make sure that I stayed negative. And prep was the best option. Thank you so much to Ashley. Make sure you follow her on Instagram at sex with Ashley. She gives so much great conversation starters. And I love the conversation that she is having around prep. Up next, I'm bringing in Enjoy the Podcast to reflect on the Madonna Whore Complex. Usually the third segment is in reaction to the starring guest's interview or conversation. But I just didn't think it was appropriate to have a bunch of men giving unsolicited advice to an expert. They just reflected on their own experiences, which I felt would be more valuable. Um, so we're going to get into that. But first, I have to really address the fact that this, although it impacts women, the Madonna whore complex is a man's issue. It is mostly a straight man's issue. And therapists and counselors working with individuals who struggle with elements of the Madonna whore complex can often use these ideas as starting points for discussions about attitude towards relationship, gender roles, and sexuality. The goal is to help individuals develop more balanced and open-minded perspectives, which can open up their potential to connect with other people and to connect with the right people for them. And this leads us nicely into me telling you that this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. 
Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com lovers and get on your way to being your best self. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear, especially when our history is murky or muddy. This is where therapy can come in. Therapy can help you positively cope with your past and help you to set boundaries in your present. And as we all know, therapy isn't for a certain kind of person. It's for everyone at different times in their lives. I shared with you all that a time that I deeply needed it, I loved the fact that BetterHelp was available on your phone and that so much was in your control when you scheduled the session whether you had a video chat or you had an audio call. And of course, if you wanted to switch counselors, you could do so at no cost whatsoever. And it was convenient. Um, I enjoyed my experience there. And if you think that therapy could be right for you right now, let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash lovers today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash lovers. We're taught, like as men, we're taught that, you know, uh, uh, you hear it all the time growing up, like somebody who a woman partake, particularly if she has been promiscuous, there is something that's not doesn't feel inherently special when you do get with her. Mm-hmm. That's just what we're taught growing up. Mm. You see it all the time in movies. You see it all the time in uh, the fantasy fairy tale. The, you know, the, the couple that gets together yeah, and like she's if everybody a virgin can get and all that. Huh? I said if everybody can have it, why well, I want it. Look, I, I think a lot of it, like you said, Jay, is insecurity. Because I think a lot of men might even be open to the idea and the possibilities of spicing up the sex life. Ma- ma- maybe trying things that they haven't tried before. But I think it's a lot of times, like, let's say, so you're bringing a toy into the bedroom, stuff yeah. like that, right? I think a lot of men, the, the initial thought is like, oh, I'm not I'm not doing it the way you want me to. Or mm-hmm. I'm not doing it enough or, or to the length of the extension that, that you'd like it. I remember when I first got with Shannon, like, the the initiation of it was oh wow there's this woman who knows a lot about sex instead of me looking at that as like an intimidating factor yeah. i was excited to go in and like figure out learn. what she knows and yeah. learn and and yeah right. i'm gonna learn <laughs> Flick <today>. her brain <laughs> but um but i i was excited about it and there is going to be men out there that are going to be excited about it and as you learn it just happens that it was compatible with me right. of the excitement around it. And I actually enjoyed it and I would want to continue. There will be a, there will be, sorry, man, you're, I keep bumping good. into this. In the best spot. Um, I will keep, you know, I know there'll be times in our life where we would go to a sex club. We've actually talked about it. We reached out to yeah. a couple like that is something that probably would enter in our relationship. So it's compatible on, on our end. But when, when she got with me, the number one question she always got asked was like, was he intimidated? Mm. like did it did it cause any issues right i get asked that all the time like how do you do it yeah when i first was getting with her and so it was just kind of one of those things where i was like it was just compatible so yeah. like to los's point is like finding Versus somebody chemistry. who is going to be compatible and i i i don't think that i am as as, as rare as what is led on to believe uh, I, I think you're a very rare breed you think so as Reason. a compliment but i also think like to your point Let's also say this. Men have a hard time committing, period. Because I guess I kind of had an experience like this where, like, yeah, she was very promiscuous and she did all her stuff. And I came into the picture. But as I was, um, I guess, involved with her, I was finding out all these other people kind of in my circle and other circles (laughs) close to me. Hey, you hit too? Yes, exactly, bro. So that's the thing that starts to mess me up at the end of the day. Is like that's why the only you... thing that messed me up at the end of the day. So body count really matters to you, to a certain extent. Yes, sounds like to all the extent. Yeah, I was gonna say what. What would be the extent that it wouldn't oh, matter? Because I was obviously involved in it, bro. But look, we talking about wifing. I'm not wifing up all these girls. So right now, body count to me, no, it doesn't matter. Oh, this is what scares me for you. I'm that's the whole conversation. It does that's matter. That's the whole conversation. <laughs> no, no, body count right now doesn't matter but to me. It matters for my wife. But, it matters but that's for my the whole way. conversation. Yeah. That is- so yes, if I'm looking to marry a girl, that's a high body count for me. I want to have ten. Okay, you can count on all fingers. Ten. That's it. So but if you were to find out, what is it about somebody's experience in the sex, you know, department is the turnoff for everything? It's uh, I guess like how you perceive everything. It's my image of them now. No, it's the quantity for you. But it has to be the. It has to be the way you view it. Yeah. yeah. I see what you're saying. Because what, what, all right, what would it be do you about? Lo- do you lose respect? No, not respect, I guess. Like, or it loses its... It's, it's weird um, to say. I guess it loses her purity for me. 
Like most guys go to the club, look to have a long, like good time, but kind of like they look for a library girl, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of men who are thinking about that yeah. long term. They're thinking about their reputation, how they're perceived. And for a lot of men, they have an issue with that. I might play with it, but I ain't going to stay with it. But why would a man want to marry um, somebody who they're not sexually compatible, compatible with and don't do the things that they want to do in the bedroom? Because they do everything else. Because most you know, can't men will also be yeah. like, I can train, I can like warp her, kind of. I know it's like a bad mindset, but most I, guys will be like, I can train her, I can warp her into her. That's you. However, though. I'm thinking. I, or I don't think that's true. The only I, I reason why I don't that. think that's true is because you I can't. know that there's men out there who will not do certain things with their wife, but they mm. will do that if they cheat. Right. <laughs> I know, facts. I know for that this, there's men that's out facts. there who will do that. And so, um, and it comes down to your brain, the way you look at it, yes. with the, like what he was saying, the perception of it. I had to get out of my own head at an early age because I remember, you know, just being like trying to figure out why it mattered to me. Like there, there was a girl that I was interested with. She dated a lot of men. And at that time, it wasn't like she had sex with all of them. She just dated a lot of people. Was it more than 15? Dated though. <laughs> like she just dated. We were in high school. And I remember just being like, she's cool. She's yeah. pretty. She's intelligent. Like we get along. Why am I like it was halting? Why am I halting it? And it really comes down to like, oh man, is my perception of her mm -hmm. and the perception on me. Yeah. And we care about our reputation. Also, it is that, but it's also like besides just you having to get over whatever you got to work through, you're gonna have to deal with like other people's view on perception. you now. That's the perception. Yeah, but what because they, but they're, they're gonna, gonna be to talking. Place, they're gonna be like, "Wow, he's with her." Perception like, and wow, reputation. Wow, she did da 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 da. But it's always I knew she did da 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 da. Than we think, though, it's always bigger oh, yeah. than we think. Oh yeah, Because I, at a certain point, it didn't matter. Like it's um uh it's like when I really got down to boil to it. Like the reason why I got over it so you know young was I was just like, "What the heck do I care?" Right. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. what is my interaction with her? And if your perception of me is different because we have some freaky sex, that sucks for you because we're having some freaky sex and it's great, yeah. you know. Um, and it doesn't matter because I'm not with you. I'm with each. I'm with her, you right. know. And so for me, it doesn't really matter to me that much. But what end up what men end up doing is that they'll they'll marry somebody that have that rule in their head like I'm not going to do things sexually with you that I would deem as somebody that I would just want to have sex with. But I don't do that with wifey. You hear that all the time, okay. and I, they end up running into a problem because now they're 20 years in and they're not sexually fa satisfied. They're looking up porn. They're trying to figure out how to like do more stuff. They have that. Then they're going to sex workers. They're going they're going out and cheating. They're finding different women that they want to keep on side chicks and stuff like that. And that's what ends up happening. That's the relationship that they get into because they marry somebody and they don't want to change their perception on that person. It's cr it's kind of crazy if you think about it. Well, what's wild though know, too is like it's hard for me to just accept that the majority of men are marrying women they're not sexually compatible with. Yeah, it's it's real, mm -hmm. but I, I think I don't believe it. It's it's wild because a lot of these OnlyFans OnlyFans oh, subscribers no, no. are married men. <laughs> I know, <laughs> like yeah. half half the men you go to the strip club, they're married men. Half the men that that are DMing Ashleys or DMing who are married men, and a lot of it is like I'm telling you, it's it's convenience. It could be financial reasons why they get and stay married. It could be they got kids. There's a lot of reasons why men, and we all know, masturbation, I can take care of it myself. I think they just like, um, I'm not married, so I, I can't know, speak to that. I don't know, fell out of like with so how know. they look now. All so right. The wife probably could have. So, I also think oh, so that the change. complaints are also a lot louder than the non complaints. It could be. It could be. Because so, I, I do see. Yeah. I think that also the the people who are unhappy are a lot louder than the people that are happy. So, I, I mean, yeah. it sounds yeah. good. Like, oh, yeah, most men do it. It's it's easy to say and it sounds, you know, it's a it's a hot take. But I don't think that it's I think that the majority of the happy people just aren't screaming from the rooftops how happy they are because they right. told their wife that they like their toes tickled or whatever yeah, the fucking yeah, yeah, case yeah. may that's be. That's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah. But I mean, you know, regardless of the fact is But both this can be true. I'm not saying that yeah. what she's I'm not saying what she's saying isn't true. I just right. that I mean, men, even even if we just like I mean, yeah. we're not I don't have the statistics on it. I don't, but I do have this panel and I know this panel one person would be interested in dating somebody who has yeah. had her Ashley's lifestyle and Everybody else would just do it for fun. So I'd if be we, open. Oh yeah, you said you're open. Yeah, my bad. He's my open. bad. Dater? You said you're open. I dare for you a cool little. You, did, you said you said you're open. Yeah. You're right. I'm open. Right. I'm open. So so you 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 got the gray area. 
Uh, everybody would experience it. Yeah, yeah, everybody but, but would experience it. Everybody's open it, to the so experience their own way. Well, it's like, I don't yeah. think I would she, be into She would this. have to sneak a relationship on me. <laughs> 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 but should they just lie? Then? So, Continue, men, yeah. so men can no. just like, no? No. They no? shouldn't. Nope, they shouldn't. Okay. Men need to check their insecurities. Hey. Well, because I know they're and already lying shit. when I get a number like seven or eight or six. Okay, let, he was actually saying Come something on, like man, you profound. Come on, man. You're back in Just <laughs> hold on Say a second, again, bro. bro. <laughs> These damn numbers. You still. Look, I, I do believe. I do. Full transparency and, and open, honest communication. The sooner, the better. That way there's no surprises. I can manage my expectations. She can manage her expectations. And again, like. Like Los was saying, if you're if she's going 100 miles per hour, find someone who's got that Usain Bolt in them. Figure it out because there's there is there's someone for everyone. Catch up. It is what it is. Yeah, there, catch up. For no mustard. So exactly. Uh, like yeah. that. That's Chicago. I think y'all hate check ketchup. I think I think, I think yeah. women lie. Lie your yeah. asses off. Women lie. Women lie. Lie your asses Why? off about how you experience. Lie that shit up through the roof. It's gonna because come out. Most, it's gonna come out. <laughs> Maybe it would, but you'll get deep. Because and you'll hook because them with what, your emotional when she does that, You'll get them as a, as a strategy. Yeah. It's gonna come out. Yeah, the better out. But it's yeah. gonna come out. You're gonna find yeah, out. Yeah, let it come, come out, out when you already knee deep in it, and you're just like, ah. Oh. Oh, it's gonna be worse. Yeah, but, <laughs> is it? It's like, gonna be worse. You, is might, it, you might, you might, get to know her. You might be like, you know what? If you're, if you're not according to Craig, all that time, he's talking all that, but all that time, I saw you who's with last, like his last girlfriend. I know his last girlfriend was. I already knew. I knew there was gonna be. I knew there was gonna be some stipulation. I didn't get. See, look, see, look, 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 Mister, I'm a teller over here talking about. I'm accepting the stip. I knew there was gonna be stipulations. Yeah, you got it. All right, man. So, hey, no, stand, stand on, stand on that square, man. Don't, don't get off the ground. I thought I had a little bit more time. Yeah. You know, okay. <laughs> you, said, yeah. you said what? You thought he had I a little said, bit more just time. Just like y'all okay. knew, I thought I had a little bit more yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't give my, it that my talk. I'm gonna tell you about time. You're supposed to give it that talk. I, I didn't get my time to tell. <laughs> you didn't give it a chance to tell about time, bro. My oh, advice man. is lie. Like, do it. It is That's dangerous. <laughs> it's not healthy. But no. most men. They talk to rah rah. You but can't they, handle the truth. Okay, <laughs> they, they can't handle. Most can't. Most they, cannot. They, 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 no, they can't. But that's they, not for them. Yeah, that's not for them. So, so just lie. Don't lie. It's all about just strategy. Light up. It's do all strategy. Lie. What do you want? You just happen to be really good want? in bed and in tune with his body. Just lie. Okay. Just Bro, lie. I this one time. I knew she was telling me the truth. She said she's only been with eight dudes in her entire life. Right. Okay. I was over here like what. Bro, she gave me head, right? Mm. She kept scraping me on accident with her teeth. I, I was like, mean, I know you, you could just be head bad at giving head. She wouldn't be scraping me this much. Yeah. This is terrible because now you're going to be, you want that? <laughs> That's what you want? No, I don't want okay, that. But uh, I knew she was telling the truth is all uh, I'm saying. Uh, I was like, damn, this listen, is terrible. No, but if it was good, you would not be like, I wonder where she learned that little <laughs> no, tongue she twist. she told me that. I would have been like, I know it's not eight. How do we yeah. get past this body count conversation? <sighs> you got you to gotta break the numbers down. So I think I think if you break it down, the oh age the God. age matters. You break it down, but I also oh, think too, okay. in all seriousness, I think it has right. to do with a lot of the evolvedness of both parties. Yeah. If you're how old are you? Twenty something years old, <laughs> and you're still finding yourself. You got some emotional maturity to work on. Emotional. Even uh, his age. <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's working <laughs> on some shit. <laughs> so a body count on? to someone like Cray is gonna hit hit different. <laughs> Okay, a body count to someone in their thirties. Yeah, right. I'm not even thinking about a body count. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my whole point, right? I'm not like, hey, how many, my, how many dudes? Are you? Yeah. That's, that's my whole point. It's so it, it depends right. on where they are in their life and the maturity level. But at the yeah. end of the day, like, I don't think you should lie. I, yeah, I, I mean, I was partly tongue in cheek yeah. with that, but because it's going sure. to come out yeah. and you're starting your whole foundation off on some rocky ash foundation. You should just be a straight yeah, up yeah, lie, yeah. but maybe don't. Yeah. Maybe don't reveal all the truth yeah, right fudge, away. Fudge, yeah. fudge the numbers. Yeah. Or how about just men just step up your insecurity? That's what I'm saying. Well, the, the, to answer your yeah. question, I don't think it's a. It, me, it, I don't think it's an insecurity. individual thing. It is insecurity. Well, no, no. It's, well, let me explain. I think it's I think it's a bigger thing. I think it's programming more than anything else. Like we've been taught that from an early age, right? Yeah. Like in through TV, through yeah. entertainment, like so many yeah. ways of uh, so many avenues that we're fed that you know. The more this person has to be this way. This person, yeah. and if a person is like this, then they're worth less, right. or right. they're yeah. devalued somehow. Like. That's that is a, a much broader conversation, yeah. and yeah. I think it's happening for younger generations because of you know social media and right. the internet has made things so much smaller and shared so much information. But I don't think that's something that like my generation like that that ship is sailed, baby. Like we gonna we, we're gonna still think what we think there for the most part. Yeah. We may be a little bit softer towards it, but 
you really got to look for like Ryu's generation. Uh, They're the ones that are going to look at shit and be. So Ashley has no hope. But let me tell you <laughs> yeah. why. Yeah. Unless she gets with somebody though. that's you on the me? same page as her, you're yeah. not going to convince yeah. somebody like. That's fair. Yeah. Let's tell you why it's not insecurity. Because I still. <laughs> what? He's trying to tell you why he's not insecure. But what I'm saying is, is like, I'm not insecure. It just has to do with like a mind thing. I just can't get around that. I don't know what it is. I can't tell you. It's not right. It's not, you know, it's not the best thing, but it's just something. I guess I'm psych- trying to figure out why that's I just not can't get that's not it's over. Don't bother. You're wasting your Here's energy on crazy. <laughs> I think the most sound advice we could have ever given was what Lo said. If you're looking for somebody at that speed, you know, you, you got to put yourself in situations, may find somebody at that sex party or in yeah. that type of community. Um, or, you know, get lucky and find somebody who is interested but never done it before and to get them to experience and, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully build off of there. Mm-hmm. It's a tough battle. At the end of the day, you know, yeah. dating is really tough. There's times where we ha- do have to make compromises. And sometimes maybe, you know, maybe we got to, you know, make a little... Inch your partner yeah. over. You know, you got to jump out the window. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's don't time. go it's to McDonald's life. looking for vegan chefs. That's it's a long you. life. You know, it's a long life. Months, don't throw. Baby. And to men, <laughs> and, to, and to, to, to men, like maybe just let's just not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Lovers and friends. Lovers and friends. I'm going to take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I said, Lovers and friends. Uh, I'm going to hold you down, down to the end. I said, Lovers and friends is executive produced by Shared Entertainment's Shan Boudram. It is produced by Boudram and Crazy Cruz with production support from 2S Entertainment's Adam Krasner and Brianna Barone. The Lovers and Friends theme song is produced by Sean Ross and performed by Jared Brady, who also does the scoring and engineering on our episodes. Lovers and Friends is powered by Audio Boom and made possible by our incredible sponsors who you can show love to by reading our show notes. 